Hello, hello everyone. How are you doing? This is Prophet Marie. I hope you guys are safe and warm and all snuggled up. Hope you guys have been able to at least try and get out and about if you needed to. But I just wanted to say happy Wednesday. I am so glad that you are joining me this evening. We have got some just good stuff. We got some good stuff we're going to be talking through this month. Uh, but for those of you uh, that are new or for those of you that may be joining us for the first time, my name is Prophet Marie Solberg. Uh, I'm an ordained prophet here at the Congregation of the Mighty and with Paula Price Ministries. And we are here to bring to you our Wednesday night service. So, and just to give you a little bit of background for uh, myself, um, I have, you know, because some of the things we're going to go through are a little scientific. Um, and that's not to scare you away. That's not to make you nervous. It's just, we're going to get into some really good stuff. Um, but so just to give you a little bit of that background, I have my bachelor's in biomedical chemistry and I have my master's in epidemiology. Um, and so some of the things that we're going to be talking about, it's going to be pulling in a lot of different things, but really demonstrating the key features of this biotic gospel. So I want you to go ahead and have uh, your chat up, go ahead and have your comments up because we're going to get into it and I'm going to be asking you questions and I am going to be looking at this chat for you guys to respond to some of the questions that I have um, that I present to you guys. And we're going to be talking this through because typically, like I said, we would do this uh, live and in person and have, you have lots of interaction. Uh, but this time we're just we're meeting electronically and let's say we're just going to have to put those comments right there in the chat so we can talk back and forth. All right. So as part of our biotic gospel campaign, one of the things that we're going to be touching on is the power of your biotic worship. So let's let's dig into that. Let's see exactly what that is. The power of your biotic worship. All right, so some of the things that we're going to be talking about in that biotic worship, it's going to be broken down here into some of the sections that we have. So we're going to be discussing worship, we're going to be discussing frequency, and we're going to be discussing resonance. So without Googling anything, who can tell me what worship is? I'm looking at the chat. Go ahead and chime in. We're getting there. Come on, guys. Talk to me. Come on. Here we go. Talk to me. So I see uh, I see some people on here. I see Tina. I see Inyetta. I see, I see a bunch of people here. Come on, guys. Talk to me. Tell me what worship is or what you think worship is. Oh, here we go. Here's Diane. Okay. Worship is paying homage to a deity. Okay. Very good. Kayla, uh, reverence and devotion to God with our lives. Okay. Good. Good. All right. Those are some really good things. So we're going to talk and actually get into the Greek and the Hebrew. We're going to dig up some scriptures of what worship actually is. Praising, praising a God. Okay. okay, we're going to get into that. So we're going to be discussing what is worship? What is sound? Again, without Googling, who can tell me what sound is? Don't Google. Come on, be honest, be, be faithful to the Lord. Tell me, what is sound? Good deal, honoring and praising. 
All right, come on, chime in, get in that chat. Come on, this is gonna be interactive. Tell me what is sound? Interesting, sound is a substance used frequency. Okay, we might be getting a little bit closer. So we're gonna talk about what is sound. We're going to talk about what are its carriers? What are the carriers of sound? We're going to talk about how it is measured. How do we measure sound? What are some of the things that we use to measure sound? What are the units of sound? So we're gonna be going through that. So, oh, sorry, should I be controlling this? Here we go. There we go, there's the slide. So how it is measured, we're gonna be discussing that. We're gonna be discussing what is frequency and what is residence. Those are actually two different things. And we're going to dig into what that actually means. On that section, second section, we're gonna get into the biologics of sound. Did you guys know that there was a biology to sound? How sound affects different tissues, how sound affects different types of matter, how sound affects the human body and how the human body not only responds to sound, but also produces sound. So this is going to be fun. This part, we're going to get into this. We're going to talk about how sound affects the human body. Again, getting into the biologics of sound and tying this all into our biotic worship and our this our biotic gospel. So we're going to talk about how sound affects the human body, how the human body produces sound and resonance. Again, that's why we're going to define some of those terms so we can know the difference between the two how the human body is an instrument of worship. We're gonna get into that. It's gonna be good. So the third section that we're gonna go through is worship, the healing, the restoration, and the life of worship. So we're gonna get into what frequency or sounds produce healing and other effects so it can produce healing or other effects, pros and cons, other effects on the human body. What are the restorative and or destructive properties of sound or worship? And we're going to get into why you fight worship. Dun, dun, dun. It's going to be good, guys. We're going to dive in. So with that, just to give you an overview, just to prep you, uh, go ahead and you can even start researching some of these things so that when we discuss and we talk them through, uh, we can have, you know, some knowledge and some feedback. We're going to be able to talk some of these through you and have come into it with an understanding um, as well as so that, too, you're, you're not afraid. You know, I think a lot of times when we start to get technical about things um, and we bring definition to the spiritual, a lot of people have a tendency to freak out um, because it's beyond a feeling. Well, we're going to bring definition to that feeling and we're going to bring standardization to that worship and how it's biotic. So really quick, before we go any further, tell me, so am I, again, like biotic worship, worship biotic. So, and you guys should know this, and I'll, I'll let you pull up your notes. What does the word biotic mean? Come on, put it in the chat. Here we go, here we go. Here we go, chime in. What does the word biotic mean? 
living life, very good, related to life, living, okay, very good, living gospel, okay, so yeah, we're going to get into how your worship is living, so Again, we're going to get into how your praise, your worship, how your your worshiping is not simply you dancing, not simply you singing, not simply your hands moving or your hands raised or all the other things that we do. We're going to get into how your worship is living and how it becomes cellulated in your mind, in your emotions, in your psyche, in your physical body. So we're going to get into that. So here we go, guys. All right. So let's get into what is worship. There we go. I think I've got this both over. Okay. So what is worship? One of the key words for worship comes from the Hebrew. It's called shacha. You got to get that in there. I know because it's Hebrew. Got to get that in there. Shaha. Notice how it sounds very similar to chakra. Isn't that interesting? The Hebrew word for worship is shaha. And it is a verb. So quick, quick little spiel in there. Come on, type it out in the chat. What? So is is a verb, uh, a, a noun, or is a verb a person, place, or thing? Like, what is a verb? What how, how what do we describe or, or prescribe a verb as? Come on, easy, simple, right? You guys know this. Action. Yes. So exactly something you do. It requires an action on your part. So the true definition of worship is, is it you standing there, staring back at the stage? Is it you just standing there being like, okay, they've done, they've done two songs. They've they've just got one more, just waiting. That's not worship. You guys just staring back at us, singers on the stage, just watching the band, putzing on your phone. Because you see, you think from the stage, we can't see you. We we can see you. So uh, that's not worship. That's not worship at all. Worship is an action. Worship is you doing. So let's look at this. So from this Hebrew term, it is to depress, to bring low. To worship is to bring yourself low. So isn't it ironic that it has nothing to do with you? What? What you saying, Prophet Marie? (laughs) Worship has nothing to do with you. True worship. Because what? You depress. I.e. to prostrate. To prostrate, especially reflexive. Not reflective. Reflexive. As in, if you were sitting on a bench and I hit that ligament in your knee, what? Your automatic reflex is your leg kicks out. That's a reflex. You don't think about it. It is just a reflex from hitting that particular ligament in your knee. And if that's not a reflex, then we know that there's something wrong with your anatomy. Isn't that telling? If your reflex 
when there is supposed to be worship going on to your God, that you're like, how great is our God. Yep, yep. The songs, I mean, they're going to do it like three times. I mean, that's not worship. That's not worship at all. You're not singing. You're not moving. You're not raising your hands. You're looking around. You're just doing whatever. And so biologically, that tells us, again, if we're doing this biologically, if we're doing this biotically, if we were to pull this in the biologic realm, that would indicate that there are defects in your anatomy. So when you don't have a reflex of worship, when you enter the presence of God, there is deformities in your biologics of how your spirit, soul, and psyche responds to God. Because see, worship should hit you. And when worship hits you, it should be reflexive. It should be a reflex to humble yourself before the Lord and pour yourself out to him like a drink offering. That should be your reflex. But why it's not your reflex, we're going to get into that. All right. In homage to royalty or God. So again, is this any part of daddy God? Jesus loves me and it's all about me. No. No. This has nothing. The worship has nothing. The very definition of worship has nothing to do with that. This is why a lot of modern worship does not touch God's heart. Because it's all about you and your issues and what you're going through and how your woe is me and you dealing with you. It has nothing to do with the greatness, majesty and sovereignty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, King and Sovereign of the cosmos. It has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with you and what? Ooh, I'm going to say it. I know. Papa Marie, you'll be like, what? I'm going to say it. it. has everything to do with you and your ego. <gasps> ego? I mean, I'm here, aren't I? I mean, like, I'm on time, aren't I? I'm worshiping. Right. That's you and your ego. Because your whole persona is, but it has to be about me. Why? Because I'm hurting. Because I'm going through. Because I'm struggling. Uh, because I don't have the finances that I want. Because I don't have the car. I don't have the house. I don't have the things that God promised me. So he's not worthy of my prostrate worship. Oh, I know I said it. I did. I said it. I'm sorry, y'all. Actually, no, I'm not sorry. Because this is in scripture. I'm not telling you anything that's not in scripture. This is in scripture. It's right. It's right there. Look up the word. Because so many times, how many times do we go through? We just go through the motions. Why? Because it's all about us. And it actually has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Because see, we're too into ourselves to put our phones down. We're too into ourselves to press beyond ourselves, not realizing that, see, worship, and we'll get into some of these definitions, worship is actually the vehicle, the matrix of which your breakthrough comes. But see, when you make it all about you, well, that can't happen. Okay, let's go on. To bow, to bow oneself down. To crouch, to fall down flat. That's the definition of worship. Not how great 
And it's, I, just, I love I love the people that do the worship like this. Like they can't even here. I'll do it in the camera. They can't even like open their hand. They just they do it like this. How great and thy God. What is that? We don't, you look like a spaghetti noodle. No one knows what you're doing. You're not paying homage. You're not bowing low. You're not laying yourself prostrate flat before the Lord. What is this? Someone, you, someone has to tell me. Again, this is like me, myself, and I, and worship is for me. That's what that is. You can't even raise your hands to the Lord. We got a problem. We got a problem, people. To humbly beseech. Yeah, because guess what? Jesus did everything he was supposed to do. He doesn't owe you anything. Yeah, because that's what we make worship about, don't we? I'm going to praise you, Lord, because at the end of the day, you owe me a blessing. That's how we treat God. That's how we treat him. No wonder half the time he's like, Holy Spirit, you go. I can't stand these people no more. My Lord, my Lord of heaven and earth, Jesus, help us. Help us, Jesus. Help us. Because, see, we're too dignified to lay ourselves flat before the Lord. Because, see, they're not playing my favorite song. I want to hear this song. Or, you know, I mean, like, we worship needs to be longer because I need more time to warm up. Your spirit is supposed to be in tune with his. When you, what does the scripture say? Entering the house with praise. Giving him the dance, the adoration, the worship that he is worthy of. It ain't got nothing to do with you. It didn't say what you thought God was worthy of. It says what he is worthy of. Yeah, let's talk about it. To sink down. Now, come on, y'all. Let's be, let's be, uh, let's be honest. Let's be real here in this moment. Have you ever had those moments where maybe you were caught in something? Maybe you were caught, you know, someone walked in and they were saying, you know, they caught you saying something that you shouldn't have said, or your mama caught you doing something. I mean, like, and you just <laughs> like do you ever have those moments like maybe it's embarrassing maybe you just like you wanted to say it but not in front of that person so you like you suck down like oh i didn't mean for that to come out we are supposed to lay ourselves out before the lord that is worship all right to do or Excuse me. Sorry here. Hold on. Okay. To do or make obeisance. Look up that word. O-B-E-I-S-A-N-C-E. -E. To do obeisance. To make obeisance. Look that up. Let that, let that revelation hit you. To do reverence. How many times do we say, I have reverence for this, or I, I reverence that, but to do reverence. It's kind of a different way to see it. Make to stoop. Notice all of this is you are bringing yourself as low and flat as possible because he is worthy of worship. Let's, that's just the Hebrew. That's just one Hebrew word. Let's look at the Greek. <laughs> Let's look at the Greek. So the Greek, prokousneo. Proskusneo. 
Notice how that sounds a lot like to prostrate. So what that means in the Greek, to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. Oh, we high on ourselves. We high on ourselves. We high on our issues. We all, mm -mm. that's what worship means in the Greek. Are you surprised? That is worship in the Greek. So before you say you worship God or I'm coming into its gates with praise, before you say that you are entering worship, let's remember what worship is, what it actually is in the Greek and the Hebrew, to kiss like a dog licking his master's hand. To fawn or crouch. That's interesting. In the Hebrew and the Greek, that showed up. Hmm. To literally, literally, like in your physical nest do. Because again, this is a verb, right? This is performance. This is action. This is what you're supposed to be doing, not proclaiming, not saying you're doing. This is what you should be doing physically with your body. Biotics. To literally or figuratively prostrate oneself in homage. Hmm. But see, some of you are are so, you're like, oh, I just, my back. Prophet, prophet, you don't understand my back. You don't understand when I raise my hands for longer than five minutes, I get tired. Prophet, you don't understand I had a long work week and I'm tired. Robin Marie, you don't understand. When, when I stand on my feet for longer than two minutes, it's just, I'm in pain. Who do you think you are kidding? Yeah, I'm gonna call you out. Because that's what prophets do. I'm sorry. I mean, just like, just because I'm the white one or the blonde one doesn't mean I'm going to hold back my punches. Look, look here. You are not fooling anyone. Because the sad thing is the media, and we're going to talk about that, the media, the matrix of which your healing and breakthrough is found on is in worship. But see, you're too busy in love with your own sickbed. And you're too busy involved in your own life that you've completely glossed over everything that God put in place to heal you and restore you. See, we, we have this thing of, uh, we gonna be the 10 times better. You can't even be better. We, we can't even get to the best or even better. Can we just get to the better? And then we'll work towards the 10 times better. Guys, we're missing it. We are missing the power of our worship. We are missing the life force that is in our worship. Because guess what? It's not about you. And that's where we struggle. Because you know what? A lot of times maybe you live through circumstances where it should have been about, about you and it wasn't. So you take those moments to make it about you. Because God is invisible. And you're just doing your good service. Worship is not about you. Worship is not about your pain. 
Worship is not about your issues. There are people across this planet that have literally put their faith out there. They didn't know everything you know. They didn't have this revelation and this truth and they don't get sermons every week from Dr. Price. They don't get any of that. All they know is God is real. God is living. And I'm going to give him my everything. Even if tomorrow I die, even if tomorrow I'm in pain, I'm going to give him everything. I'm going to worship him. What? Like scripture says, in spirit and in truth. So my challenge to you is, what is your truth? Obviously, it's not this. Because this is the truth of what worship is. Let's talk. Let, let's talk. Let's talk about it. Now, is it a progression? Is it something you have to work towards? Yeah, absolutely. Everybody understands that. We don't come out the gate doing cartwheels. We can't all dance like Missy. I can't. Missy, I love you and I so enjoy you. I just want you to know that. But I'm just giving you as an example. We can't all be like Missy. Just, oh, we, some, you know, maybe you, hey, I'm not asking you to be like Inyeta. That's like, with the flags and you like, I mean, like you just going, I mean, hey, if that's what the Lord called you to, then do it. But I can understand, yes, has God called us all to it? I got to work my way up to that. I, I may get a cramp in my shoulder if I just go hard at it. But guess what? I'll go hard at my breakthrough. I'll get a breakthrough. I can tell you that much. Because what? I am the offering. You are the offering. Beyond your money, beyond your tithe, when it comes to the sacrificial gift, when it comes to the burnt offering, when it comes to the water offering, when it comes to being poured out before the Lord's altar, you to sacrifice. Your body's the sacrifice. Guys, have the time. We, we can't get you to clap more than like a couple measures into a song. What is that? Yeah, I said it. It's okay if you're mad at me. Yeah, I said it. You can't even clap through a whole song. What is your truth? If we're supposed to work, if we're Christians, if we're the elect, if we're the congregation of the mighty. Then what's our truth? What is it? Why are you there? If you're just going to stand there and not do anything, not worship at all. Why are you there? You're making worship about you. You're not making it about Jesus Christ. Well, he hasn't done, he hasn't answered my prayer. He saved you from the pit of hell. He made it possible for you to have eternal life. He gave you his blood. He gave you his body. He gave you his everything. And you can't give him 30 minutes, 10 minutes of worship as this is defined? Children of God. We have a problem and it's time to fix it because that's what it means to be biotic. It means to actually put this into our DNA. It is for it to actually be written into our chromosomes. And guess what? When that actually happens, because what did we talk about last time? The genotype will reflect in the phenotype. What does that mean? If worship in spirit and in truth, is truly in you, your body is going to be the spirit and truth of what worship is actually defined as. We got to standardize it, guys. We got to come up. We got to come up to where God's at. Okay. 
to literally or figuratively prostrate oneself in homage. Look up that word. Look up that word, what homage means. To do reverence to. To do reverence to. To adore. We don't adore things anymore. We say things are adorable. I mean, and we barely adore our kids. I mean, we do. Hey, making it through. To adore. To adore. If someone was to watch you in worship, would they walk away saying, they adore that person? If someone was to watch you, sinner, saint, in fact, I'll say sinner, okay? Because see, a saint's going to try and sugarcoat it because they're at where they're at. If a sinner, someone who don't know nothing about Jesus, if a sinner was to watch you during worship, would they say they adore that person? We all talking about Valentine's Day and sugar love and, and all that paganness. Acting like we adore this person and that person all to feed our narcissistic tendencies. Are you narcissistic towards God? Does your worship, if someone was to watch you during worship, because again, these are actions. These are verbs. Don't get it twisted because I know you want to defend yourself. I get it. I understand. I know I'm pricking your heart, but this is the true biotic gospel. So if someone was, again, verb, perform, do, action, if someone was to watch you during worship, would they walk away thinking they adore God? They adore him. Whatever they are doing they are adoring it. Whatever person that they're doing this for, they adore them. Would they say that about you? Because they should. That's what our worship should reflect. Because that is the very definition of worship. Here we go, guys. Let's go. I know y'all love me, right? You still love me. Sure you do. All right. So let's get into this here. Biotic worship. Let's start with scripture, right? Let's start with the word. Worship in the King James. I didn't look it up any other versions. I stuck with the King James. Worship in the King James. Worship shows up 188 times. Now, for some extra points, I'll give out some extra points to you, y'all. How many times is pastor found in scripture? Come on, put it in the chat. Come on. Go, 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 go. Come on, guys. How many times is pastor put it in scripture? Okay, some say once, some say twice, a lot of other people say once, okay. Twice, some people say twice. So definitely not 188 times. I think twice might be different versions of the Bible, honestly. I think in the King James is just once. So think how much we harp on pastors. You know, the caretakers of the flock. Not to be down on pastors, but that is their main role. They are flock oriented. Versus worship found 188 times. Think on that. Praise. Praise in the King James. 259 times in the Bible. 259 times. 
You think it might be, you know, important? Think you think maybe, maybe, kind of, sort of, you think it might be a good idea? Hmm. Again, guys, these are just definitions. We're just, we're just scratching the surface. We haven't even gone deep. I'll let you know when we go deep. We haven't even gone deep yet. All right, let's look at this. Let's look at Psalms 119, 160 through 164. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. Princes have persecuted me without a cause, but my heart standeth in awe of thy word. I rejoice at thy word as one that findeth great spoil. I hate an abhorred lying, but thy law I do love. Thy law, not thy grace, not thy love, not thy mercy. Mm -mm, I don't say that. But thy law do I love. Seven times a day. Come on, say it with me. Seven times a day. Seven times a day. Do I praise thee because of thy righteous judgments? You can't judge me. I mean, it's not for anyone to judge. Do I praise thee for thy righteous judgments? So I'm going to ask you a question. And trust me, I include myself in this number. Okay, I include myself in this number. Okay, why ourselves before the Lord? How many times today did you praise him? And not just, oh, thank you, God, I didn't slip on that ice. Or, oh, thank you, God, I didn't uh, end up in the ditch. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, thank, thank you, Jesus. Or, oh, thank you, Jesus, that didn't happen. And it, I'm, I'm not talking about the quick little, you know, thank you, Jesus. How many times did you praise the Lord today for his righteous judgments. It didn't say whether you thought they were righteous. The Lord's righteous judgments. So let's look at praise. You know, being you're like, okay, you're saying it's not just thank you, Jesus. So what is praise? I mean, you're going to say it, what it's not. Let's look at it. And so it comes from the Hebrew, and this is just one of the many Hebrew terms for praise. On your own time, look up all the Hebrew words for praise. I think you will surprise yourself. I know I was. I didn't know there were that many. I think there were 48. I want to say 48 different terms for praise. What was that sound? We'll get into that. Okay. So the Hebrew word for praise, halal, halal. I wrote it out there phonetically for you too, because, hey, if these are the two languages the Lord picked for his word, we, we should, you know, do our best to, you know, get it right. Halal. To be clear. Origin to be clear of sound, originally of sound. Isn't that interesting? There's that sound piece that's being pulled in. Again, the biotics of our worship, our biotic worship. To be clear of sound, um, but usually of color. We're going to get into that because both have to do with frequencies. To be clear of sound, your praise should be clear. Tell, I tell you what, to the spirit realm, it's clear. What you worship. Mm -hmm. To shine. That 
That's what praise means. To shine. To shine. Hence, to make a show. So me just standing here like this, looking at you, is not praise. Is that what you're saying, prophet? That's exactly what I'm saying. That's not praise. I'm praising God in my mind. I'm praising God in my spirit. Liar. <laughs> Liar. I'm going to say it. I said it. Liar. Praise. Hence, to make a show. Come on, y'all. We got to do better. To boast. Do you boast of the Lord? Do you boast of him? And I'm not just saying, hey, praise be unto God. I'm, you know, your, your little spiels you do when you greet each other. Or, you know, the boasting that you do when we ask how you're doing. We're not talking about that boasting. We're talking about it in your life. Walk into your car. Talking to your neighbor uh, to boast. And thus to be clamorously foolish. Just like David. But see, half of you, I'll just say half. I'll be generous. I'll just say half. Half of you are too dignified and too stuck on yourselves to be anything like David. To be clamorously foolish. A king of a nation has no problem, but somehow you do. Okay, okay. To rave. To rave. But see, that requires you having a knowledge of the Holy Ghost. To celebrate. Also to make boast. To celebrate. Command. What does your praise command? See, whether you realize it or not, you are summoning things into your life. You are summoning or commanding doom, depression. You are summoning those things in your life, whether you want to or not, whether you're aware of it or not. Because does the devil care? No, he don't care. You think he cares if you're aware? He don't care. To command. What is your praise commanding to deal or make what deals are you making with your praise did you know that that was a thing uh fool foolishly fully glory what does your praise glory do you glorify your job? Do you glorify your poverty or your money? Do you glorify your traits, your beauty, your looks? Because if you are so dignified that you can't make a show openly of your praise, then you're praising the wrong thing. <laughs> Give light. What does your praise give off? Does your praise give off boredom? Does your praise give off your disinterest? What does your praise give off? Is it illuminating? 
Is it illuminating to you? It should be because you're the one doing it. I love this one. Give in marriage. Hmm. Praise. The Hebrew word for praise means give in marriage. Because after all, we're the body of Christ. So our praise should be that. Your praise is supposed to be your vows to the holiness and sovereignty of Jesus Christ. That's how intimate your praise is supposed to be. Is it? Or is it just something you do on a Sunday? Or is it something you do when you're going through? Sing, be worthy of praise, renown, renowned, shine. So we saw that in both places. Shine. Your praise should shine. And not just in your head. Your praise should be obvious. Oh boy, guys. Here we go. All right. So let's, uh, we've got still some time here. Let's get into this. So now let's talk about sound. Sound. So what is sound? It's vibrations that travel through the air or another media. Think about that. Another media. And can be heard when they reach a person or person's or animal's ear. Sound produced by continuous and regular vibrations as opposed to noise. Sound and noise are two different things because the vibrations of sound are continuous and regular, not irregular, regular. So guess what that means? Your sound should be in sync with how God hears. Think about that. Your praise, the sound of your worship, should be the continuous and regular as it should match the frequency and vibrations of eternity. This is why worship has nothing to do with you. And it has everything to do with body, soul, mind, psyche, spirit, all of it becoming in tune with the sound of heaven. That's what your worship is supposed to produce. Or are you producing noise? Now, yes, scripture says make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It does. That's where you should start. But that's not where you should end. So, <laughs> I love you guys. 48 different Hebrew terms for sound are found in scripture. I challenge you. You don't even, you know, back in the day, we had to pull out the like huge strong concordance. I have one. I have one in my library. It's like a solid almost two inches thick. Because I, I'm going to say I'm older. Okay, I'm older. If you wanted to look up the Greek and the Hebrew, see, there was no e-sword. There was no uh, Strong's Concordance online. If you wanted to look these things up and actually find things and find words and find scriptures, you had to look them up in this huge book that you could not carry all over the place because the thing was so stinking heavy. It's big. It's huge. Like I said, I have it in my library. Guys, now you can go to... Strong's Concordance Online, and all of this is searchable. 
I wish I could tell you this was deep revelation. Guys, it's not. It's not deep. It's not deep revelation. All this is, is going back to the basics. These are just definitions. Like I said, we ain't going deep. These are just definitions. So two of the ones that I, I really liked that I really enjoyed. Again, look up all 48 on your own time. Get your own revelation. Walk away with your own understanding. So H 8643. Clamor. I.e. an <coughs> excuse me. An acclamation of joy or a battle cry. Is your praise a battle cry? Is your war, is your worship a warship? Or is it just wah, wah? especially a uh, clangor of, sorry, I should have put my glasses on trumpets. So it also can be an alarm, uh, blowing of the trumpets, joy. That's one of the definitions of sound, joy. Some of you are so laden with rejection and depression and anxiety. And you, it literally, your breakthrough is at your fingertips. Joy, rejoicing, shouting, a jubilant, uh, loud noise, shouting, high, joyful sounding. That's just one Hebrew definition. H8085, to hear intelligently, sound. When you're in your worship, can you hear it intelligently what God is telling you, what the Holy Spirit is showing you or saying to you? Often with implication of attention. Attention, not you being distracted, looking at your watch, looking at your shoes, looking at the stage, looking at, I don't know, your friend's hairpiece. Come on. Attention, obedience. What? Yeah, obedience. To tell attentively, call, a call to gather, together. Consent. Are you with your praise, with your worship? Are you giving the Holy Spirit consent to do what he wants? Consider, be content. So many of you are so dissatisfied with your own life. And that's because worship and praise has no place in it. Declare diligently. It's not something you do overnight. Diligently discern. You should be able to discern and worship. Give ear, cause to, let, make to, hear, akin, tell, make noise, be obedient. There it is again. Be obedient, obey, perceive. Proclamation, publish. What is your sound publishing? So guys, it's time we're going to end it there. But what we're going to get into and in in further along, and I, like I said, I strongly encourage you to get in this, dig into this. What is the power of your worship? Because you're worshiping something. You're either worshiping your own narcissistic tendencies. You're either worshiping yourself and your own issues and your own pain, because apparently that means more to you than God. And what we're going to get into, I loved that term publish because see your body not only is affected by sound, but it gives off sound. Well, yeah, Prophet Marie, we know like there's a heartbeat. <laughs> I'm not just talking about a heartbeat. Your organs produce a residence and a frequency. And we're going to get into that. What is your body publishing? Because it's publishing what you worship. And your biotic worship should be unto the Lord. 
I love you guys. I promise you I do. This is going to be great, guys. This is going to be great. This is going to this is going to be transformative. It's going to be revelatory. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. Stick with me. Stick with me, guys. This is going to set you free. Bye.